My name is Victor Alec and I'm an early career researcher at Cambridge Wellcome Trust, Nairobi. And I most of my research focuses on infectious diseases in Sub-Saharan Africa. I effectively do research around malaria and uh, childhood illnesses. And I look also at other things such as interventions in health. I look at how interventions affect population, uh, how in the impact interventions have on population. I also lately have diversified into not just malaria, but also looking at the whole burden of infectious diseases in Africa. As my research focuses on burden estimation, particularly in, uh, on malaria, I think that health statistics are quite important on an several and uh, several things. The first is that health statistics are vital for us to understand what the burden of disease is in the population. We need to know how many cases of disease burden occur in any single part of the country or the countries, um, for example, in Sub-Saharan Africa, so that we can intervene appropriately. And that brings me to the second point, which is if we are intervening in population, we need to know what the impact those interventions are and health statistics help us actually understand the impact of those interventions, whether we are reducing disease burden or we are just not doing much. So I think my area of research um, is impactful on tropical illnesses because then I am able to monitor some of the statistics I actually come up with on what's the health status of the population. So recently I've been um, looking at febrile malaria cases in Africa. And one of the things I wanted to understand is, of all the febrile case burdens or the fever cases that we see in population in Sub-Saharan Africa, how many of these actually are treated in various sectors? And my findings were quite, uh, and I uh, highlighted some few important things. One is that out of the case burden we see on fevers, only half of those are treated in the public formal sectors that we know. Um, the other half, of course, are treated in the private sector. Some are treated informally, but we don't have quite control on what happens in informal treatment. And we don't understand, actually, what happens to the other, um, even the, the ones which actually are treated in the private sector. We don't know the effective case management um, that actually goes on in those sectors. So my research was highlighting that we are only able to publicly handle 50%. Should we improve our public health systems? Should we in incorporate private system in decisions we make around health? And should we understand more about those cases that are actually treated outside the public sector? Um, what are the effective case management um, pr um, approaches can we use for those who are treated informally <coughs> or um, at community level? Um, and this is, this is a sort of key questions that have raised my my, in, uh, my inquisition to actually try and understand what's going on with these other sectors uh, outside the public sector, basically. I think with the change in disease burden in Sub-Saharan Africa, one of the things that has been highlighted more in the last five or three years is the need for improved surveillance. So one of the things WHO enacted in, 19, in 2012 was the T3 initiative, which you treat you test, you treat, and then you track the particular case you, you're looking at. And this is the whole framework of surveillance. Um, and it has developed in the sense that we are starting to appreciate the use of routine sectors or the public sectors, as I've explained. Or we are trying to understand more what is happening to routine cases that actually come to the health facilities. How do we treat them? We are trying to improve treatment practices we do have effective medicine that has improved in the, over the last five or 10 years, basically in malaria, for example. And then since mid 2006, they start, uh, the use of ACTs have improved treatment of malaria. Um, in terms of um, testing, we have improved diagnostics. We now have RDTs, uh, rapid tests that are can actually um, be used in informal settings at a community level to just test whether someone has um, disease or they don't have a disease before you treat them. And that actually improves. If a case is not malaria, it then it will help a clinician try and find out what other disease could the child be harboring. 
and, and effectively handle that case. So we've improved um, issues on how we handle cases. Research has improved in this area uh, over the last five years. Uh, I think that's one of the most effective things we've done uh, when it comes to disease burden. My line of research um, at the moment focuses around improving burden estimation, disease burden estimation. If you look at the last 10 years or so, malaria mapping, for example, has improved tremendously. Uh, we've collected more community surveys. We've understood what levels of prevalence are, prevalence of disease are at the community level. But we haven't appreciated the use of routine data more and how we could use effectively to actually quantify this burden in the population. And my line of research has focused in this area of using routine data um, because with the change in burden, we are trying to strengthen surveillance, um, strengthening surveillance um, approaches like the T3 initiative um, contributes tremendously on how we, how we then estimate our health statistics. And this is the reason why you need to invest more in routine systems. We need to invest more in the science of how you use routine systems to estimate disease burden because it doesn't cost as much. We already have the health facilities, for example. We know people come to these health facilities. My research has focused on understanding how people use these systems. Um, and we need to invest more to actually try and improve how we estimate disease burden using these routine systems. They are the best barometers of diseases in the population, and not just malaria, but a whole lot of infectious burden in sub-Saharan Africa. Transnational medicine focuses on, um, or has themes around diagnosis, um, treatment, as well as management of these cases, uh, of, of, of medicine basically. Um, for malaria, um, one of the things uh, I have highlighted is that we are now using this TEST T3 initiative, which is actually testing, treating, and then tracking. And over the past few years, we have tremendously improved the, the first T's, which is to test and to treat. We have not really done much around tracking, um, and tracking of infections has to do with surveillance uh, in the community, following up cases when disease burden has, is now low or cases are now rare. And this obviously fits in properly or uh, fits in perfectly with the, with the transitional medicine um, around uh, case management and surveillance activities and so on. So there is a relationship between what I do and what happens um, with the transitional medicine themes. Um, and the two uh, fit in together.